John Gambino, a formidable figure of the criminal underworld born in Palermo, Sicily, rose to prominence as the captain and head of the Cherry Hill Gambinos, the Gambino crime family's Sicilian faction and became a key player in organized crime. Notably, John Gambino was a distant relative of Carlo Gambino, the boss of the Gambino family, cementing his ties to the infamous dynasty. His influence spans from the gritty streets of New York City to the far-reaching web of illicit operations. Whispers of his involvement in drug trafficking, extortion, and strategic brilliance echo through the corridors of law enforcement. With an indomitable will and an unyielding grip on power, John Gambino embodies the dark allure and treachery that define organized crime. John Gambino was born Giovanni Gambino on August 22, 1940, in Palermo, Sicily. The Gambinos were from Paso di Rigano in Palermo, the same neighborhood as the Inzerillo clan, headed by Salvatore Inzerillo. The Inzerillos were related to the Gambinos through a string of marriages. John Gambino and his brothers Rosario and Giuseppe were the sons of Tommaso and Salvatricia Gambino, and in 1964, Tommaso brought the family to New York. Although Carlo Gambino was their uncle, they owed him no allegiance as they were Sicilian mafiosi and made men, from Palermo. They could not have been made in the American Cosa Nostra, whose books had been closed almost uninterruptedly since 1931. Together with his younger brothers Rosario and Giuseppe, John formed a faction of the Gambino crime family, known as the Cherry Hill Gambinos, in the New Jersey town of the same name. In 1966, the Gambino brothers ran Café Valentino in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. At the time, a new wave of Sicilian immigrants were beginning to settle in Brooklyn. Not too far away, Salvatore Catalano, opened a little newspaper souvenir shop just opposite the Café Viale, a hangout for the Bonanno family's nascent Sicilian faction, which was headed by Catalano. In 1968, Filippo Casamento, a native of Palermo who had stowed away on a passenger liner from Genoa to America, opened a modest store on Avenue U in Brooklyn called the Eagle Cheese Company. However, heroin and cocaine entered and left through the back. Among Casamento's associates was Tommaso Buschetta as well as the Cherry Hill Gambinos. The Cherry Hill Gambinos were the pivot of Sicilian Mafia operations in the United States. Nearly all the exiles who would dominate the heroin consortium were clustered around them. The Mafia's most dangerous turncoat in Sicilian history, Tommaso Buschetta, also naturally moved into the Cherry Hill Gambinos' inner circle. The Gambino's top heroin courier since the 1960s, Emanuele Adamata, set up Buschetta's letter drop in Manhattan. Buschetta's older sons, Benedetto and Antonio, were put to work in a New Jersey pizzeria owned by the three Gambinos. It later emerged that John Gambino had owned 240 pizzerias, which made about $240 million annually, facilitated the selling of drugs and money laundering. By the late 1960s, most of the Contrera Caruana Mafia clan left the small village of Siculiana, when they were banished by court order, as a result of a crackdown by Italian police after the Schiacoli massacre. The Contrera brothers, Paolo, Pasquale, and Gaspar Contrera moved on to Caracas in Venezuela. The Contreras went into business in a big way, setting up dozens of companies with a fascinating team of partners. Registered formally as shareholders, they would include Salvatore Greco, Nick Rizzuto, and John Gambino. The Contrera Caruanas and the other roving heroin traders have been referred to as a mafia in their own right. They formed what would be called a transatlantic syndicate, whose power floated dangerously free of the territories controlled by the Sicilian and American branches of Cosa Nostra. The transatlantic syndicate had the keys to the United States heroin market, anyone who wanted to supply bulk dope to the East Coast had little choice but to go through them. Several partners opted for the cattle trade, 
a strategic as well as profitable decision. John Gambino set up a cattle breeding station in 1971, with his wife and his cousin Erasmus Gambino, in the Venezuelan state of Barinas near the Colombian frontier. In the late 1970s, the Inzerillo family and Stefano Bontad made up a group of Sicilian Mafia heroin dealers, and John Gambino served as the point of contact in the country as well as the destination for their shipments of heroin, which were made in Sicilian laboratories using Turkish morphine base. The Gambino brothers' main contact and the dominant figure in Sicily with a wide range of interests and significant financial investments was their relative, Salvatore Inzerillo. The Cherry Hill Gambinos became a massive ring that smuggled heroin into the United States via the Sicilian Mafia from Italy and South America. By the close of the 1970s, Sicilian traffickers were sending somewhere around $1 billion yearly from America to Palermo by way of Switzerland, Liechtenstein, London, Caracas, and the Cayman Islands. The most renowned international banker swindler, Michaela Sendona, was entrusted with the management of these monies. Settling in Milan as a corporate tax lawyer in 1948, Sendona rose to giddy heights over the next three decades. The Gruppo Sendona came to include six banks in four countries, the international Siga hotel chain, Libby Foods, and some 500 other corporations. Sendona controlled the stock market in Milan, where 40% of the shares traded on any given day were under his direct or occult command. One of Sindona's underground clients were the Sicilian Mafia. Sindona's troubles began when he bought the Franklin Bank in New York with money he didn't own, siphoned off from his banks in Italy. By October 1974, the bank was on the verge of collapse, and Sindona borrowed $1.7 billion from the Federal Reserve to save it, however, Six days later the bank went bankrupt. Four of his other banks collapsed in Europe within another week. Sheltering from Italian justice in New York, Sindona finally came to the end of the road. In March 1979, a U.S. indictment cited him on 99 counts of fraud, perjury, and misappropriation of bank funds in which he faced 25 years imprisonment in America. John Gambino had a friendship with Sindona that went back a long way. Sindona was the financial consultant for the G&G &G Concrete Company. Sindona's most implacable foe was Giorgio Ambrosali, the lawyer overseeing the liquidation of Sindona's Milan Bank. After countless futile attempts to intimidate Ambrosali, in July 1979 Sindona sent a mafia hitman from New York to Milan to murder him. The killing only worsened Sindona's legal situation and the next month he disappeared from his suite at the Hotel Pierre in New York, where he was under house arrest. In August 1979, with the help of John Gambino, members of the Gambino crime family in a fake beard, Sindona staged his own kidnapping by an imaginary left-wing terrorist group. During the first two months of his disappearance, police were prepared to believe that Sindona was in the hands of terrorists. They were therefore surprised to discover on October 9, 1979, that the person delivering a ransom note to Sindona's lawyer in Rome was none other than Vincenzo Spatola. The people who were keeping Sindona in Sicily were the very same mafiosi who were already under investigation for running the massive heroin ring between Palermo and New York. In October 1979, Sindona surrendered to the FBI. Vincenzo Spatola was the brother of Rosario Spatola, a multimillionaire building contractor, a public benefactor, and a power in politics. Rosario Spatola was arrested on charges of kidnapping Sindona, but it was soon discovered that he was in fact Sindona's friendly host. Sindona had spent weeks at Spatola's father-in-law's villa in Toretta, not far from Palermo, where he was shot in the thigh to maintain the fiction of a terrorist kidnapping. However, Spatola was in much deeper than that, he was John Gambino's cousin, business partner, and prime accomplice. Furthermore, he was laundering and reinvesting an astonishing amount of heroin money, and John Gambino was sending it. The Spatola case spread across Western Europe and the Atlantic over a few years, branching off in a dozen different directions. 
Investigators discovered over a hundred Sicilian traffickers working between Palermo and New York, all of them were affiliated with a single criminal gang. This was contrary to the adamant denial of law enforcement agencies worldwide. In the end, the case provided verifiable evidence that the Sicilian Mafia had grown into a sizable global cartel for heroin. The Gambino brothers were sending their heroin money back to Sicily, to Inzerillo and Spatola, who invested in legitimate business. By 1982, the Gambino and Zerillo Spatola holdings in Palermo alone were found to be worth around $1 billion. In 1980, Sindona was convicted and received 25 years in New York. On March 18, 1986, he was sentenced to life imprisonment as instigator of the Ambrosoli murder, but on March 22, 1986, he died of cyanide poisoning at the age of 65. In the summer of 1979, the DEA had gotten a lead in the middle of Michaela Sendona's fake kidnapping. In August, John Gambino had flown over from New York to guide Sendona around Palermo. During his month in Sicily, his partners had sent five kilos of heroin to the younger Gambino brothers, Rosario and Giuseppe in New York, and DEA agents had intercepted it at the Kennedy Airport. In the course of seizing two more consignments in a row at the airport, the DEA acquired an intrepid mole, Frank Raleigh, a baggage handler for Alitalia. Raleigh was Sicilian-born, and on and off he worked for the Cherry Hill Gambinos. In March 1980, Raleigh went to meet Emanuele Adamida, and was taken to the Milo Lucci Cafe for a meeting with Rosario and Giuseppe Gambino. The brothers wanted to try a new and safer shipping route from Italy. For $30,000, Raleigh agreed to set one up with Adamida, in Milan. Two DEA agents tailed Raleigh and Adamida across the Atlantic, saw the heroin come up from Sicily in a truckload of lemons, and watched the two ship it off to New York in a zinc container with a hundred LP records of Italian pop music. Raleigh was taken away to enter the U.S. Witness Protection Program, while the Italian police arrested Adamida and his accomplices in Milan. However, the traffickers caught in Italy were tried there, those in America became a separate case and nobody was extradited in either direction, and despite repeated requests from Judge Giovanni Falcone in Italy, neither was John Gambino. In New York, John, Rosario, and Giuseppe Gambino were arrested on the same day with several of their aides, however each of them were acquitted. In Italy, Adamida and his accomplices were tried with 78 other Sicilian traffickers headed by John Gambino, his co-conspirator in Palermo, Rosario Spatola, as well as John himself, in absentia. Neither country followed the other's case or saw the other's court records, and it would take about four years before the Americans learned that Salvatore Catalano, along with Giuseppe Ganchi and their whole crew in New York, had owned a big share of Adamida's 40-kilo heroin shipment. Meanwhile in Italy, Salvatore Rina, boss of the rival Corleone faction, viewed the Inzerillo family and its alliance with the Gambinos as an obstacle to his seizure of total control of the Sicilian Mafia. On April 23, 1981, while driving home from his 42nd birthday party in Palermo, Bontad was killed with a Kalashnikov by Rina's favorite hitman, Giuseppe Greco. Three weeks later on May 11, 1981, Salvatore Inzerillo was killed with the same weapon. In October 1984, John, Giuseppe and Rosario Gambino were under indictment on federal charges of conspiracy and distributing heroin. However, in December 1984, Rosario was convicted and sentenced to 45 years in prison, while his brothers were acquitted. In the second significant set of coordinated sweeps by the American and Italian authorities against Sicilian Mafia drug rings operating in the United States on December 1, 1988, 52 people were detained across the nation. They dismantled the Cherry Hill Gambino's heroin operation. In parallel, 133 additional people were arrested by the Italian authorities in connected raids and at least 22 of them were accused of drug-related charges. 
This joint effort came eight months after the United States and Italy began what was described as the biggest cooperative drug case ever mounted by the two nations against alleged traffickers. Nine of those charged were arrested together around 2 a.m. in the Café Giardino, where FBI agents had planted electronic bugs. This operation was named Operation Iron Tower. Giuseppe Gambino's Café Giardino was an important meeting place of the conspirators. Among the visitors was John Gotti, identified as the current head of the Gambino family. The Café Giardino yielded evidence enough to bag just one of the Gambino brothers, Giuseppe. Rosario had already been sentenced to 45 years. The FBI still couldn't gather enough evidence to jail John Gambino, although he faced a six-and-a-half-year jail sentence in Italy, a sentence in absentia confirmed by Italy's Supreme Court in 1985. John Gambino's partner in crime, Rosario Spatola, second-in-command under the late Salvatore Inzerillo, and co-sponsor of Michaela Sendona's fake kidnapping, would vanish from Sicily in 1986. This operation proved that it was not just the Cherry Hill Gambinos, but all the families who had once run the old mafia in Palermo, making up the Gambino and Zerillo Spatola di Maggio superclan, supposedly killed off years ago by the Corleonesi, had continued to ship heroin from Sicily right through the Great Mafia War. Giuseppe and John Gambino, along with six other defendants, including Francesco and Zerillo, were indicted on charges that they participated in the 1988 murder of Francesco Oliveri and smuggled and distributed drugs. They also allegedly managed a number of organized crime enterprises. Sammy Gravano, a mafia turncoat, claimed that John Gambino received permission from John Gotti to execute Francesco Oliveri, who was accused of killing a member of his crew. January 4, 1990 saw the arrest of John Gambino. Later, he was accused of violating narcotics and racketeering laws in a superseding indictment. He was released on a $2 million personal recognizance bail on January 5, 1990. On July 8, 1992, the court agreed to the government's motion to stop John Gambino's electronic surveillance. Due to the repeated blackouts, the electronic monitoring system was useless. It allowed John Gambino to leave his house during these blackouts, as the monitoring system was turned off. On September 1, 1992, the authorities discovered that John Gambino had broken the terms of his bail arrangement and fled on August 31, 1992. Following a protracted international manhunt, government authorities apprehended John Gambino and his brother, Giuseppe Gambino, on September 17, 1992, in a hotel in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The court then issued orders mandating that the sureties forfeit the $2 million bond. The FBI believed that in Florida, the brothers had friends and associates who would help them flee to Venezuela, where John Gambino owned an interest in a ranch. The trial against John and Giuseppe Gambino began in February 1993. The defense responded that the primary drug and murder allegations in the case were based on the uncorroborated testimony of Marino Manoia and Sammy Gravano, whom the defense characterized as killers and liars. The prosecution portrayed them as the main distributors of heroin smuggled from Italy and South America to Miami and New York by the Sicilian Mafia. In June 1993, a jury was unable to return a verdict on the allegations of racketeering, drug trafficking, and murder, and the case was declared a mistrial. Since Italy did not have a witness protection program at the time, Marino Manoia was accepted into one in the United States. Manoia said in court that he had personally met with John Gambino, who had checked the quality of the heroin he was processing in Palermo. In an agreement with the prosecution, the Gambinos eventually pleaded guilty to drug trafficking as a result of Manoia's testimony. In June 1994, after prosecutors recommended 15-year sentences without parole, the men agreed to plead guilty to the racketeering charges stemming from activity that took place from 1975 to 1992. According to Pentito, Gaspar Mutolo, in 1981, the first of his ships delivered 400 kilograms of ready-refined heroin from Thailand, 
half of it went to the Contrera Caruanas, and half to John Gambino in Cherry Hills. John Gambino endured open-heart surgery, a heart attack, and a stroke while incarcerated. He was released in October 2005, but he was afterwards detained to answer Italy's extradition request. He was then released on bail. A federal judge rejected the extradition request in September 2006, ruling that John Gambino had already served a 15-year term in the U.S. for drug trafficking and murder, and could not be tried for the same charges in Italy. On November 16, 2017, John Gambino died of natural causes in New York at the age of 77, and at that time, the acting boss of the Gambino crime family was his nephew, Frank Kelly.